Hi guys, welcome. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make a hybrid animal in Photoshop. So you should have just finished all the tutorials for composite images, meaning putting multiple images together. And now we're going to put those skills to use and create something hilarious and awkward and just weird and cheesy, okay? <laughs> so I have Google up and the first thing, oh look, you can see uh, that we are near July 25th when I'm filming this, that's fun. <laughs> Let's search for, I don't know, what two animals do we want to put together? Guys, what two animals should we put together? When I did this last year for my class, I did it during the live session and I asked them and then we searched up stuff right then and there. So now having to come up with it on my own, I'm a little bit like, I don't know. Oh, you know what? What if I use my picture of my own dog and I do have one right here. I'm going to get rid of this on my desktop. So let me show you the video or the, the video, the photo. So this is my dog. Uh, back when we lived in an apartment and I made her a little grass box. So what if we kept, you know, part of her body or maybe her face and then swapped it out with another animal? So I'm, I'm looking at the shape of her and I'm thinking about like what I could put on here or what we could cut out her head and put on something else. The positioning of the animals and pick two animals that are going to kind of stick together like, you know, in a fairly easy way to like stick them together, but also to choose similar lighting. So now I've got a, I've got one animal. All right. All right. Here, there's one. And I know part, some of you guys might think, hey, she should be more prepared for this. I'm trying to give you a realistic view as to what you're going to go through. I don't know. Let's say horse because my um, sister-in-law and her sisters are here in Las Vegas this weekend doing a horsey competition. So uh, let's go to images and then let's do tools and we'll do labeled for reuse. And let's see. So one of the things that I kind of want to pay attention to is if they're going to blend you know, fairly easily together. So, you know, these horses are the same color, but they're not really standing in the same position. I mean, I guess maybe I could take this horse head and put it on her, depending on how big the the photo is. Oh, it's 608 pixels by 402 pixels. And this one, I wonder if I can get the data by right clicking. Let's see. get info. So this photo, which is two and a half megabytes, it's a big photo, size, more info. Okay, dimensions. So right here, it's 2,448 pixels by 3,264 pixels. So this is a huge photo. All right, that means that it it's a big photo. It's got a lot of pixels in it. So if I was to use this photo right here, which is from the National Park Service, nps.gov, which means it is public domain, so we can use it. I would, I'd go to the website and just double check, but it probably is public domain. Um, maybe, maybe. I, I would have to go look, but just, you know, bear with me. I'm looking for ones that are public domain that I could use. So it's 608 pixels by 402 pixels. So that's like this big compared to my picture of the dog. So it's very small. Now I would have to blow it up really big just to get this horse head. That's not really going to help me. I, it's going to look really awkward because it's not a good picture. If I click here and try to go see more about this horse picture... So it is a National Park Service photo. So that's good. But it doesn't 
I don't have a, there's no bigger version. That's the size of it right there. That means I, I can't use it. It's not big enough. Okay, let's keep looking. Maybe we'll find another horsey picture that might be kind of fun to use with that. Hmm. Oh, what's this one? Oh, okay. So this one's a little bit bigger. I could reverse the way that her head is facing and stick it on there. Stick it on that full. That would be kind of fun. <gasps> Look at this little jumping one. That's cute. That is a painting. <laughs> that's computer. <laughs> that's a computer graphic on a real photograph. This is how not to do a composite. That's really funny though. Okay, look at that hair. Ooh, fancy. Oh, this one is like facing the same way almost. I could maybe just take this horse head and put it on her. All right, let's try it. Let's see. And it's 1024 by 722. So that's, that's a fairly large size and it should be big enough that when I stick it on here, it's not gonna be weird. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to open the image in a new tab and then I'm going to right click. I'm going to save the image to my desktop course for hybrid animal. Okay. And then I'm going to go back here and I'm going to click and I'm going to double check what the usage license is. Oh. Click here for a large view. Is it even large? Oh, look, we can get. Oh, no, I already got the largest. See, 1024 is the largest. Okay. All right. I'm not seeing the usage information on here, but most of the images on Flickr, you need to credit the person. So I'm going to credit this Wolfgang Stott person. All right. So I'm just going to keep this tab open so I can come back here and reference that when I am done editing. Let's jump over to Photoshop. I've got the horsey picture and the doggy picture and we're going to open up Photoshop. And since I am going to be just putting the horse on top of her, the doggy picture, I'm just going to open open this with Photoshop. Um, the other way to do that is to right click open with Photoshop. I am going to now bring in the horse picture and we can see how much smaller the horse picture is compared to my picture. But, oh my gosh, stop. <laughs> Look at that. Look, I don't even need to like it, changes. it lines up perfectly. I cannot even right now, guys. Look how perfect the the rear end lines up and the chest. I couldn't have even planned that if I tried. You saw me at the beginning of this video. I was like, yeah, we're going to like wing it right now. <laughs> okay, I'm going to click enter. And so that's going to place the image. Let me zoom in here and kind of adjust this just a little bit. Okay, so I think that's pretty close. Okay. <laughs> I can't even right now, guys. But also, to choose similar lighting. Okay. Let me show you how that turned out. Here it is. So after messing around and editing, let me zoom in here. This is what I got. <laughs> um, very silly. Absolutely. It definitely fits the tone of the assignment. I really want these to blend together a little better. I do have a video that I recorded of doing this one, but at the end of the day, I just don't really like how different the lighting is, how different the lighting is. I really want them to work together better. So at the cost of wasting all the time that I spent on that one, um, I went back to 
Google Images. And I did the exact same search, horse labeled for reuse, and I scrolled down past this guy, this gorgeous hair in the sun, <laughs> golden hour picture of this very photogenic horse. And I kept scrolling and looking, looking, seeing if there's anything that's, you know, similar position. And I went, oh, look at this guy. Hey. This one is standing in about the same position, so I could stick them together nicely. So about the same body position. And the lighting isn't so bad. It's not so different. I mean, we do have some shadows across it, but I don't think that's, I don't think it's gonna be as bad as the blatantly obvious different um, lighting from the first image that I chose. So when I click on it and I look at the licensing, so it already says here free image for commercial use. And then I come down here. This photo is free for commercial use. And commercial is the most restrictive because that means that you can sell it. So if it's free for commercial, it's free for the other ones too. Private use and putting it on social media and for education and all that. So we're good to go here. It is, it, they have it in the public domain. So, awesome. Um, it does say, please respect the personal rights and trademarks if there are people or brands. So there's no brand, there's no trademarks on here. So we are good to go. And I'll show you how that one came out. Boom. Better already. Look at that. Wow. I mean, it's, it's kind of obvious that there's some lighting issues because there's not holes in the side of this balcony, but I could, you know, then from here, take the amalgamation, this hybrid animal creature and go stick it some, like in another background if I wanted to, where some shadows like this might make sense. And I think it's funny. And actually the lighting on the hair right here on this mane, which is cracking me up because, you know, the animal underneath here is my dog. So seeing her with a different head and this hair is hilarious. But this dog, the dog underneath here, and let me turn this off. So she has the same direction of lighting. So that already is way better. We can see that the lighting is coming from the front kind of off to the left, shining in at this direction. We see the highlight on the front breast left here, and then we see the shadow cast by her her face and her chin, right down here. This is all shadow, and then we've got highlight back here. And if we look at the horse picture, we see a very similar lighting. Okay, it's not the same, but it's very, very similar. It We see the highlight underneath the chin, we see the highlight on the hair. We see the highlight back here. We see the shadow cast by the face down here. So it's a very similar direction. So I'm already worlds better than I was with this photo where the lighting is actually right back up here. Okay. And the lighting is coming from behind. So it's a completely different direction. So I spend all this time talking about the choice of photos because that is going to like save your life basically <laughs> when it comes to finally editing this together. I am so much happier with how this one looks than this one. It's just blatantly, obviously different lighting. Uh, it's, it's just too much. It's just way too much. So I, <sighs> I'm sad because, you know, I spent a lot of time on this one and you might get to that point too. Um, so this is me just being real with you that you might spend a lot of time and go, I hate it. And that's fine. That's fine. If you turn in a project and you're like, I spent all this time editing and now I know I should have picked this one instead. Like I spent so much time trying to make this work. I've probably spent, I don't know. I, don't, I can't even tell you. And I've spent maybe five minutes on this one. <laughs> Yeah, so, okay, now I'm going to turn off the little um, picture in the bottom where I'm at and do a 
transfer over so that I can show you how I did this one, how I did this one here. And I don't know if anyone even wants to see the, you know, <laughs> the trash pony that I feel like this one is. Because the struggle is real, guys. It is. I'm not immune from that. And so we can see this one that is much, much better. Okay, so I am going to save this and close it because it's not going to look the exact same anyways. And because I'm going to start over so you can see the whole process. All right, I'm going to open this in Photoshop. On my Mac, I can actually just drag it to the thumbnail on the bottom of the screen, but on a PC, you'll have to file, open, and then go find your um, file, which is, it's actually this one, Little Fox on Grass Box. So I'm in my desktop, and yes, I have a million things on here. Little desktop. Right there, that one. Okay, so that's all you'll have to do is you'll have to open it using the dialog box. And if you have a ton of stuff in your, you know, desktop or in your documents, wherever it is, then you can just search for it and then search in that folder or in that area. Okay, so here's my base. I am going to Command J or Control J to duplicate that layer. That way I'm not going to edit my background layer. Remember, we want to work non-destructively. So let's rename this to Little Fox original okay and then little fox um edited we will edit it okay and then i am just going to drag in the horse picture it's on my desktop nope not that one this one the pony pretty sure that's a pony not a it doesn't matter. Okay, so in CC 2019, you don't have to hold shift. So I sometimes still hold shift because for years and years and years, you had to hold shift in order to constrain proportions. Because if you weren't holding shift, this is what it would do. But now they've reversed that. So you should have, if you're using the one that you got through the school, you should have one that is more recent. And so you won't have to hold shift. Also, I'm going to use a tool in this video that does require 2019 or later. And when you are, you know, downloading it through your license that you got through the school, you will have the latest version. And when I, when we go back to school, I'm recording this in summer, but when we start up school again, I will also be getting the license update and be able to update to 2020 or whatever year you're watching this. So I'm gonna use the selection tool, the quick selection tool. I'm actually gonna select the horse that I want to keep because I don't want the other one. And I'm just gonna select the whole thing because at this point I don't really know how much of it I'm going to use. So I'll just select it all, leaving the little floof back there. And if I wanna cut that out right now, I can go to the minus and take that back out. Okay, kind of clean that up a little bit. I mean, I'm going to clean that up later, but it doesn't really matter. Okay, let's go back to layers and we'll choose the mask. So that part is gone and I'm not quite lined up. That might be good. Once I start getting rid of some of the other pieces, I'm going to know even better and I'll probably have to edit that again. I'm going to turn that off for now and work on the dog because we can see some of the dog has to be covered up. I'm going to get rid of her head, her face, really just the face and ears. I'm going to leave the neck to try and 
if I need to blend the two layers together at all. I'm not sure what I'll need, but I'm going to leave her neck. I'm just going to try to get rid of her face and ears. And to do that again, I'm going to go to the quick selection tool and I need the plus and I'm just going to highlight her head and ears. Now I'm using a tool that I recently learned about because it is a recent addition to Adobe Photoshop versus my version because I started on CS3 or 4. So there's been a lot since then. But if you want to watch the entire tutorial, I will link it in the lesson, but it's this one right here. So you guys just finished the beginner photo compositing course, which is these five videos here. And on this main Photoshop tutorials page, the very next video is how to remove objects using content aware fill. So if you like this and you're like, wow, I want to watch that tutorial and actually get more information than Miss Van Lone is giving me, go watch it. I'll put the link in here. So uh, we have our selection. We are on the layer that we want. We're going to go edit and content aware fill. And I'm going to zoom out a little further. And what we see is that it's kind of ghosting. So I'm on this lasso tool, which is the selection. And I'm going to actually expand the selection out a little bit and see if maybe I can get rid of more bits. So it says 10 pixels. That's fine. I'm going to expand. Wow, that made a huge difference just by expanding my selection out a little bit. I am also going to redo the area that it is sampling from. So basically this tool takes the information from around where we want to get rid of, and it, it doesn't squish it together necessarily, but it tries to repeat in this area what it sees around here. So it's a fairly intelligent algorithm, but it's not perfect. I'm going to tell it not to sample any of this grass. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of all this down here because we don't need any of that. I had a really fun one where it actually took her tail and it recreated the tail right here. So it's, um, it's a really funny tool when it does some funny stuff on its own. And I'm going to get rid of the body because we just want that gray area. Mm. I actually kind of like it having the, the like nub come up because <laughs> it kind of like nestles in. Let's see what's going on with this section here. Maybe I can um, add in an area for it to get rid of. There, that's a little better. All right, I don't hate that. Oh, we've got some ghosting here with the ear, so let's add that to our selection. Let's just, in fact, increase this a little bit more. Okay, let's just, let's see how that looks. Let's go back to layers. Oh, Control D or Command D to deselect, D for deselect, and that's pretty good. Okay, let's cover up a little bit more of our horse. So I am on the mask, the layer mask. I grab my paintbrush tool and I make sure I'm on black and the brackets make my paintbrush bigger or smaller and I'm just gonna get rid of all right, I think it's too big at the moment. So let's grab the horse and we'll go ahead and command T and try and make her a little smaller. And that's actually fitting quite nicely. I like how that's looking. I can use my arrows left and right to kind of nudge it. <laughs> it looks like it looks like a potato, a little a little chunk, but we can clean that up. All right, I'm going to zoom in, Command Plus or Control Plus, and go back to my layer mask, 
my paintbrush tool. I'm on black. Let's do this. I'm going to try to do some cleaning up of these edges just real quick. You know what, I'm going to pause it real quick and finish off that part and I'll pick up again in a second. Well, in a few seconds. I am going to, I can see a little bit of this green. I'm going to take the flow down a little bit. I'm going to leave it on black. Not that. And I have a very fuzzy brush right now. So it's very soft. It's not a hard edge. It's a very soft edge, kind of like a spray paint. And when I take the flow down, I can go right next to it and it's going to kind of feather that edge. Just where I see that green from the grass. Okay. How are we doing over here? I think all oh, that looks pretty good. I am kind of excited about this. All right, I do kind of want to blend this area a little better. I wonder what that would look like if I... Mm. I think I need to then move... Sorry, let's bring back your nose, dude. If I did this, I think I would need to move the head down a little bit. Like, I think it's too high. Right? Oh, there we go. That might be it. So it was up here. And if I move it down to there, that looks great. I'm really happy with that placement. All right, I'm going to clean this edge back up. I'm Again, I'm on my layer mask, and I un... <laughs> I unmasked that part. So I'm going to remask that and then I'll check back in with you guys. Okay, so I got rid of that part that was over here and now I've brought my flow down even further. I brought it back up and I made the edge really hard and I got that nice and clean and now I'm bringing the flow back down so that I can kind of blend this edge together. And so because I have the flow really turned down as I'm bringing, you know, these two layers closer together, they're, you know, I'm seeing a little bit of each layer rather than just seeing one or the other. So even if I, you know, draw over this, I have to do it a lot to see what's underneath. Let me undo that. Okay. I'm going to zoom out, control minus. Now this is coming down a little bit too far because I scooched the head down, meaning that I scooched everything down. So I'm going to bring, bring that bigger and I'm going to bring the flow back up and I'm going to see where the body is. So it's all the way up there. And I kind of like having this fur here from the horse, the longer fur on the leg. It helps bring the two layers together. And now I'm going to bring back some of that fur. So right now it's hidden under the layer mask. So I'm going to switch back to white and my, remember my flow is still at a hundred. All right. What do we think? I don't know. I wonder how it would look if instead of having some of the horse fur, horse hair there, if I actually just got rid of all of it and only kept that gorgeous long blonde hair that is the mane. Well, I kind of like that too. I don't know. I think maybe... A little bit of the fuzziness in this area would be nice. Just to 
help the colors kind of blend together. So, so you know, just play around. I kind of like that. I kind of like it a lot. And if I wanted to, I could also take, you know, cut this out, this creature now, and put it somewhere else. And, you know, those shadows would make even more sense. But for now, I think we're going to end it here. Thanks for watching. I hope this really helps. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Or ask your instructor if uh, you have a different instructor. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye.